Hey, I'm Jim Dudley, and welcome back to Policing Matters. And in this special series on mental health and well being for law enforcement officers, Dr. Black, let's talk a little bit about protective and proactive wellness in regards to sleep and rest. What can you tell us about sleep and rest, particularly for those that work the night shift and the midnight shift and they're rolling home around 3 a.m. or 6 a.m.? Uh, how important is sleep? What can they do? Thanks, Jim. Yeah, this is such, such a critically important topic for law enforcement. You know, the research shows that about 75% of our law enforcement do not get sufficient sleep. They get insufficient sleep on their shift nights. So they're going into work, they're going into life death situations, being sleep deprived. And I would say sleep is critical for all humans. And that includes law enforcement. As a society, we outsource our worst case scenarios to our law enforcement heroes nationwide. And then what we know is that there's also research that shows that sleep disturbance is one of the best predictors, if not the best predictor of developing post-traumatic stress following exposure to a traumatic event, which we know law enforcement encounters those all the time. So one way to think about it is your sleep represents an inflection point, is more and more stress is being piled on top of you over the course of your career. Sleep is gonna be a major determining factor when it comes to your mental health and your physical health. Do you grow stronger and stronger and more resilient over time as these stressors are stacked up on top of you? Or do you start to trend downward where we're calculating time to impact because we're all human, we all have our limitations. Sleep helps you grow stronger when you get healthy, sufficient sleep in response to the stressors of life. You know, one thing that's interesting, if you talk to sleep professionals, you talk to doctors who are sleep experts and, and they specialize in running sleep labs and such, they will all tell you uh, for the most part that the most important thing is keep a sleep schedule. You know, go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time every single day. Well, well that's fantastic, right? Unless you're a cop, <laughs> because it's totally, it, like if you want to make a, a police laugh when you're talking about sleep, say, just keep yourself on a sleep schedule because it's totally impossible to do. All the more reason that you have to do these other things and really prioritize your sleep. And, and just keep in mind, if you're working these night shifts and such, that's much more doable when you're younger but it gets harder and harder the older you get to work graves, work nights and shift your sleep schedule around like that. So some things I advise are, you know, one, um, think about investing in a sleep mask. If you go to Amazon, for example, type in sleep mask, they tend to be 10 bucks. A lot of people use blackout shades, et cetera. The important thing is that you're getting what we call full retinal blackout. And because that stimulates your pineal gland to produce your natural melatonin, your body will produce natural melatonin, but only in, in response to full retinal blackout. And you need that hormone uh, release to get a full deep sleep. Um, look at temperature. Temperature is really critical. If you live in some of these warmer states and we're starting to trend upwards in temperature right now, that will disrupt your sleep. Uh, the sleep lab research shows you want it 68 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. Uh, to get your uh, deepest, most restful, longest lasting sleep. I also encourage people, you know, be really careful with caffeine and alcohol. You know, the thing with caffeine, uh, law enforcement tend to drink it on the shift, helps you stay alert, helps you stay hyper vigilant, officer safety, fantastic. Problem is, caffeine has a long metabolic life in your system and it's going to continue to stay alive in your system, you know, eight hours after you drink that energy drink that's still alive and revving in you and you're trying to go to sleep and you're not falling asleep as fast. You're not getting as deep of a sleep or as restful. Also alcohol, watch out for alcohol. That sometimes helps people take the edge off a stressful day, helps people sometimes fall asleep. Guess what? That's the wrong way to do it. Um, for a lot of reasons that we'll talk about in an upcoming one, um, but also it disrupts your deep sleep. It disrupts your REM, your deep restful restorative sleep. And then last tip is get support from your family. Make sure they're on board. Make sure they appreciate how critically important it is that you get your, your sufficient sleep. And so they help look out for you and protect that sleep time for you because that's so important for your health and wellness. Well, thanks, doctor. Those are all great tips. And you, you remind me of you know, the dilemma I had after working a week of midnight shifts, do I try to stay on that same cycle for my meager two or three days off? Or do I try to, you know, meet up and sync with the rest of society for 
those two or three days, those were the toughest challenges. Yeah, absolutely. No question about it. Um, Mandy, do you want to add anything here? Sure. So just to compliment some of the really great tips that you were sharing with that, sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming to think about trying to adopt a new healthy habit like sleep or like any of the other healthy habits. So some of the smallest steps that you can take that build the most positive momentum are those things with, in particular with sleep, such as making sure that you're sleeping in a comfortable position with what we call kinetic chain alignment. So kinetic chain alignment is just basically making sure that your body is in a good position to not uh, increase any pulling or tension or pressure on your muscles and your joints. And you can do that very easily just using the proper pillow setup and uh, having a good, good solid mattress. So essentially what you want to do to increase or to optimize your kinetic chain alignment when you sleep and thereby opt again, optimize that recovery cycle um, is to make sure that your head is neutral. If you're lying on your side, make sure that your head is in a neutral position. Your head isn't tilted down toward the pillow or away from the pillow, and then make sure that your shoulders are supported with a pillow between them. So otherwise your one, one arm is going to cross over the other, and that's going to twist your thoracic spine or twist your body in a way that's not comfortable for it. And it's going to cause a lot of pain and it can also cause some disruption in your sleep quality too. So um, you have your neck is neutral on a pillow and you can use a towel, a folded towel to kind of adjust the height there. But then also your spine is neutral because you have a pillow between your arms. And then the last thing left is your legs. So again, sleeping on your side, if you're, if you're, uh, are sleeping on your right side, for example, you want to go ahead and just put a pillow between your knees and your ankles. That's going to keep your ankles in alignment, your knees in alignment, your hips in alignment, and it'll also prevent your back from twisting um, like it would if you were to not use a pillow and then cross one leg over the other. So in summary, make sure your head is neutral. You have a pillow between your arms and a pillow between your knees and your ankles, and you'll align your joints, your muscles, etc. so that even if you don't necessarily get the full eight hours of sleep that's recommended, you're making the very most of the few hours that you get so that you get better quality sleep, even if you can't get the full quantity. Great advice. Thanks so much.